So I just got done watching the Disney Plus original film, Safety, and as a former football player myself, and as someone who really likes sports movies, you can tell I probably had at least some expectations for this movie, so let's talk about it. Safety is based on a true story, much like a lot of football movies are, and typically those are the ones I really like. I love The Blind Side, I really like Remember the Titans, and something's touching me, what's touching me? <sighs> Sorry. And so I really wanted to like this movie, and I didn't have too high expectations for this, but before the month started, I planned out all the films I was going to watch and review. And Safety was, of course, on the list. And I, I, I wrote down what I thought the movie was going to be and what grade I was thought I was going to give it. And I wrote down for this one, generic and forgettable. That's what I thought this movie was going to be, and I wrote down that I'd probably give it a C. And I'm actually shocked that this movie's actually pretty good. I really had a good time with this. Disney does do sports movies very well. Hell, they made Remember the Titans, one of the ones I just uh, s uh, said earlier. And I really like to Remember the Titans. So, I really want, so I went into this wanting to like it, even though I didn't think it was going to be very good, and I actually had a really good time with this movie. Uh, it's not a perfect movie. I don't think there's a single movie this year that's been perfect outside of Just Mercy. But, this is actually a really fun movie. I generally hate college movies, because they're so dumb with some really bad comedy and some really horrible characters. This one doesn't have that problem. The, w one of the best things this movie does is a lot of these movies, a lot of these kinds of movies that suck, at least the ones that suck, they fall into the trap of they create stereotypical characters or unrealistic characters or implausible scenarios or, or dumb shit like that. Since this one's based on a true story, we know it's plausible. And one thing I really like is that None of the characters are, none of the characters are stereotypes. Every single, there is not a single character who, there's never this asshole character. They set one up, like he's potentially going to be this guy, but then they pull the rug out from under us saying, nope, that's not what we're doing. Because this movie seems to understand what a team is. I've, I played football for, for years, from, for, about eight years I played football, and two of those years were high school ball. So I understand what it's like to be on a football team. So don't think I'm talking out of my ass here. And this movie gets what a football team is. A football team, and any team really, needs cohesion and there needs to be no internal conflict. And a lot of these players get that. They're, the one guy that they set up to be the, the asshole stereotype shows that he has a reason that he's kind of iffy towards this new freshman named Ray, who's the um, newcomer, who's who's the main character, not newcomer, because he's obviously a freshman, and he's like, I, I would go to war for every single one on, person on this team, including you, I need to know that you would do the same. That is probably one of my favorite, one of the best examples of what a team should be. That's, what the, that's why I think I really like this movie, because it understands a team, and they really needed to, because Ray has some of these guys help him hide his brother inside his dorm, not only his roommate, but a few of the guys on the football team, and even the coaches are understanding, well, they're, they're for, because it's, they're not even like, they're mad at him for kind of bending, for bending or even breaking the rules here by bringing his brother, having his brother live on campus, they're mad because he didn't tell them, because he tried to hide it from them. And that's something that, I, that see, it, it, also, it shows they also understand coaches. They will understand a predicament, but if you try to hide it from them, try to lie about your situation to your coaches, they will get pissed off at you. I have, I have witnessed this with their teammates. I don't lie about stuff to coaches, because I, I have nothing to lie about. But when someone does that, they will get pissed at you. They will not get mad if you have a complicated situation. They will get mad for lying to them about it, and for not explaining, because it even shows, I remember seeing the trailer thinking, isn't there, isn't this, there any way they can get around this, and they mention multiple ways they can get around this, they talk about his brother going to some kind of, like, child home, 
And then he gets, and then Ray gets, like, upset. He said he's like, I'll take him. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, kind of unrealistic. I think most people would kind of just let him go because they know that they could potentially lose their scholarship here. But I, I can get where he's coming from here. And then I lost my second point. What was my second point? Yeah, well, I completely lost what my other point was. Um, I don't know, but not the point. I'm, I'm gonna give it around to. I'm not really feeling well th uh, today. I've got a headache. I've a little nausea, so I'm not. I'm not feeling the greatest. So I, I don't have that much uh, like energy to me right now, and that's probably why I forgot my other point. So I'm gonna just move on. It, if I think about it, if it comes to me, I'll let you know. The acting for this movie is really. All over the place. A lot of these actors do very well. His um, uh, his love interest is named Casey, who's played by uh, Connie Fox, who is the daughter of Jamie Fox, the uh, Academy Award nominated actor. Did he win one? I don't know if he did. I think he might have won one for Jingle and Chain. I'm not sure, but he was at least nominated for one. I know that. And she's his daughter. I did not realize that until after I saw the movie. And I, oh my, and that's really cool. She's actually very good in this. She's probably the best actor in the movie. The coaches all do really well, and I like some of the, and I like his teammates, and I, I like the actors. I think probably the weakest actor in this movie is the main character, is the main actor who plays Ray. And it's not even like he's bad. But every once in a while, he'll have an interaction where his lines come off really awkward. Like, there's every scene he has with his mother, which is like two scenes, actually, but every scene he has with his mother, he does very well. But whenever he has, like, a really close personal talk with either Casey or his brother, Famar, sometimes it just comes, like, when his, Famar runs away because he understands the predicament that Ray is in, and he goes after, and he goes looking for him, and he finds him in his diner, and he, he talks to him, and he's, his lines come off so awkwardly. And there's another scene where he's talking to Casey, and he's, they're just talking, and his line delivery is so awkward. I, I don't understand what happened, because sometimes he does very well, but then it'll, but then all of a sudden, it'll just have this really, like, choppy feel to it, like he'll, He's kind of mono. His line delivery is kind of monotone, and it's like he's almost forgetting his line. I don't know if that was bad directing or if he just struggled with some of the scenes. But it's not like he was an not like he was a terrible actor. He did fine for the most part. But then there was, it was just those few scenes that were kind of off. I, I like the one football section to the the one football game they have. They don't show very much, but I like what they did with it. And one thing that annoys me is that the end of the movie ends with them gearing up for the Bowden Bowl. Is it Bowden or Bowden? I can't remember. But then they don't show the game. They just show that, oh, they went on to win the game. Because I, I know a lot of real-life stories show what happens, like, say in text, what happens after the movie with pictures of uh, the real-life event. But it says they went on to win the Bowden Bowl 27-20 or whatever the score was. And I'm like, why didn't you show it? Show the damn football game. Because I was actually getting annoyed, I'm like, when it started fading, when it started, the movie started to fade out, I'm like, really? Are we not going to get to see the game? Come on. That kind of annoyed me. And th this movie's two hours long. And it, I don't know if it was just me. It, it didn't feel like it dragged at all. The pacing for this movie was actually very well done. I thought uh, all the, all the editing was done really well, except for one aspect and I think this more this is more on the directing side than is the editor's fault. This had the same problem with Man of Steel, where it's like most scenes, at least in a couple shots, will have shaky cam. And I don't know if this was intentional or they just couldn't get a fucking tripod. This movie didn't. I don't think this movie had a huge budget, but tripods are not expensive. Hell, I own one, and I don't use it for the, like. I'm, I have a tripod. It's like, is my camera moving? No. And it's not even like, it's like a camera's move. I can understand it a little bit if it's like a camera that's like moving around, if it's constantly like shifting places, but it's just like a, a straight on shot. And it's like the guy couldn't keep the damn camera steady. It's like either do a split screen shot or get a tripod. Actually, you know what? Don't even do a split screen shot. Just get a freaking tripod. Those cost like 30 bucks tops. I could probably go, I could probably run to Best Buy and find one for like 10 bucks. So, yeah, that, that that's one problem with the directing. I I I'm, I haven't seen this director. I don't any of this other director's work. I think I didn't check his IMDb, and I really don't care enough to. 
But it, it, the directing was okay, except for that little camera work issue. And, yeah, it's like everything is good, except for a tiny aspect of it. The acting is good, except for a couple scenes with Ray. The directing is mostly solid, except for those Except for those shots where the camera just kind of shakes. And if you if you don't pay attention to film like I do, you probably won't notice. But someone who actually pays attention and likes well-shot movies, it was distracting as hell. The, the football scene was really well done. I like the practice scenes. But, they, but there aren't very many of them. And I don't particularly like... Like I said, I don't like college movies where it's like always having to juggle all these problems. But this movie did that one pretty well because it had... It had a more personal stake to it. It isn't just, oh, he's balancing this new relationship and all his schoolwork and a sport and maybe something else. But this one, he has a more personal stake in it because he ha- he's watching over his brother. And I, and uh, the movies don't do it. I don't think I've ever seen a movie that does something like this. I know there are probably movies out there where like, oh, he has to stay in the dorm. Yeah, it's, it's, it, this isn't the most creative idea because this is based on a true story. But it's, Still executed very well. Like, like I said, the idea is very basic and generic, but the execution was very well done. I was legitimately impressed with this film. And I like, and I remember in my Why Does Disney Suck in 2020 that I said Soul must better be a goddamn masterpiece, and it was a, and it was average. It was just an average movie. It was, so forgettable and very, very disappointing. This one I had much lower expectations for than I did for Soul, and I wound up being surprised this isn't a masterpiece, and I think one of these films needed to be make up for all of Disney's bullshit this year. This one didn't make up for any of it, but it definitely it, it definitely made up for at least one of them. I think this movie probably made up for Soul a bit. But it didn't make up for the rest of Disney. If this movie had if I ended up giving this movie like an A or an A plus, it would I would immediately forgive No, I wouldn't immediately forgive. I would I would forgive some of Disney's horse shit from this year. I still wouldn't forgive Mulan. That would be the one exception. I would probably end up forgiving Artemis Fowl. Yes, I said it. I know a lot of people hate Artemis Fowl, but I wasn't offended by it because I didn't read the book. This one it, like it's a generic idea, but for someone who loves football and who understands what this guy is and can get behind what this guy is going through, it it's a really fun movie for me. So if you like sports movies like The Blind Side or Remember the Titans, like I said, you'll probably really enjoy this. If you don't like sports movies like that, this probably won't change your mind. But it's still not a harmful movie. It's if you don't like sports movies, it's still. It's still a fine watch, I, I'd say. I'd still say, I recommend this movie. If you have a Disney Plus subscription, it's free. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to give Safety a B. I am legitimately shocked I'm giving it this high of a grade. And I find it hilarious that in my predictions that I was going to give Soul a B and Safety a C. And those legitimately flipped. I ended up giving this one a B and Soul a C. So I find that hilarious. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below. And I really didn't want to do a review tonight because I am not feeling very well. But I made a commitment to get a review out every day f- until January. January 1st will be my last 2020 review. And it'll be Wonder Woman 84. Because I'm seeing that. I'll be seeing that on New Year's Eve. I'll, that's kind of my thing. I, so I watch like any big release in December. I go to on New Year's Eve. I did it for. Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, Rogue One, and 2018 I did for Aquaman. So, why not do another DC? So, yeah, I'm going to have... Upcoming reviews, I'm going to have um, The Midnight Sky, which is on Net- which is on Netflix now. And yes, I'm going to do Songbird. I don't want to. I shouldn't have to. I don't have to, as a matter of fact. But I said I would, so. I hope you appreciate the bullshit I sit through. I will have a new Cinematic Disasters review posted probably after the Wonder Woman review. I don't know. I said I was going to get one out before the year ended, but I don't think that's going to happen with all these reviews I'm pumping out. So that will be kind of related to holidays, too, like I said, in January. But it'll be in January, so it'll just be loosely related. So... Yeah, and I'll see y'all next time.
Bye. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go take some medicine. Because otherwise, my head is going to explode. Frick my life.